in a place called Decker Canyon, there's a lost civilization with walls that surround the city and artifacts carved into the mountains that could not have possibly been from the Indians, the technology that they believe was a part of this lost civilization was from another world. Could you comment on what your feelings are in terms of our planet being colonized by extraterrestrials in terms of Atlantis and Lemuria or the land of moon? Yeah, I can. I'm not sure how much comfort it will give you. Um, it seems to me an underwhelming proposition. In other words, if this happened, where is the evidence? Uh, you know, there have been fabulous civilizations existing in the past. But their artifacts, their buildings, their earthworks are available to be visited and seen. It seems to me, you know, in trying to build models, I try to follow Occam's razor. You all know what Occam's razor is? Hypotheses should not be multiplied without necessity. And I just find the, the lost continent thing um, an unnecessary hypothesis. I think there are lost civilizations, but I think we do a grave injustice to our dilemma and our accomplishments by thinking that anybody ever stood in this position before. To me, you see, there's an impulse that's very old in the Western mind to, um, and strangely enough, I trade on it to some degree, it's called the nostalgia for paradise. And it's that we're always looking back to a lost golden age. And I think there was a lost golden age on the plains of Africa 15 to 20,000 years ago. I discussed it this morning. But I don't think high technology has ever existed before on this planet. Well, there's just no evidence of it. And the Atlantean and people and the enthusiasts of Mur, Mur, Mu and Lemuria are always trying to fiddle with the dates and say, you know, the Great Pyramid is 25,000 years old and there's a ruin on the Nazca Plain that's 50,000 years old. This is, first of all, the evidence is absolutely unconvincing and second of all the miracle is not how old the breakout into language and technology is but how recent it I, is I, I agree with you I think that um, you know if you were to go scuba diving off of Bermuda in the Bimini Islands you would find what many people believe are artifacts from Atlantis you can hike in Decker Canyon and most of what is to be found is under water because of the shift in the continental plate 10,000 years ago or more. But many people believe that the UFO involvement in that civilization um, is still very active today. I know someone who I believe you met last night, Robert Stanley from Unicus Magazine, who takes people on these expeditions in Decker Canyon. He took somebody at the beginning of the summer and a raw film was shot the person was from the East Coast, I believe, in Boston, and he spaced on the development of the film. He just forgot about it, and he decided, okay, I might as well get this developed, and sure enough, hovering in the distance over this part of the canyon were 12 saucers, and it's a pretty obvious picture. I saw it last night for the first time, and I'm just curious because I think that a lot of us don't really deal with a lot of the information that's coming out right now because it's overwhelming. You know, it's almost like, wow. Well, I, I, I am prepared to be convinced, but I'm not willing to buy in without a fair amount of evidence. As far as UFOs are concerned, um, I've thought a lot about it. I've seen them far away, up close, and it's not what people say it is. And the, the problem, there, there are two phenomena the UFO, who knows what that is, and then the UFO community. And, my God, these people are much weirder than UFOs. I mean, they... The, 
well, the whole slew of them. And the whole problem with the UFO community is apparently these people have never heard about the rules of evidence. I mean, they're just full of revelation after revelation with absolutely zip to back it up. There are so many, I mean, you look at these UFO magazines. Well, do you want to believe Master Chen Thuk of the Nabungi system? Or do you want to go with the the Billy Myers crowd? Or what's coming out of Brazil? Uh, I think Jacques Vallée in one of his books estimated that if you don't believe UFOs only appear where there are witnesses, and uh, take the number of sightings seen by people and extrapolate that by the area of the surface of the Earth, you have to conclude that UFOs are coming and going from this planet at a rate of 12,000 a month. Well, my God, what kind of extraterrestrial contact is this? That 12,000 a month for 50 years and never a definitive piece of evidence. I was talking to one of the researchers on the fetal abduction thing. This guy was all excited. He said to me, you know, I've talked to 500 women who claim uh, surgical removal of fetuses. And he said, and you know the amazing thing? There's not a single uh, uh, sign of physical invasion of these women's bodies. And I said, well, Dr. X, doesn't this suggest something to you? And he said, yeah, advanced surgical techniques of which we have no knowledge. I said, well, yeah, but doesn't it, I mean, give me a break. So I think they have to operate in the light of the same evidence as everybody else. And their problem is that they claim to know too much. They're just willing to tell you, you know, 125,000 years ago they arrived to grow sweet peas and then 100,000 years ago the project changed and the 11th planet did something. Too much, too much data. It's too Jack Armstrong-ish. Do you believe our government has the technology to travel in ships to other stars? Do you think we're doing that today or do you think that's our future? No, I don't think we're doing that today. I mean, this is a, we have a government that can't uh, knock off uh, a loud mouth in Baghdad, let alone travel to other stars. So you believe our space program? Pardon me. Our space program is limited to what NASA tells us is the reality of what's going on. And is that basically, you don't think there's like an underground or a whole network of societies and organizations within our government that are involved in research and technology? Well, obviously, there is a black portion of the government where research goes on and probably fairly kinky things are carried out. But these people are no different from us. I mean, some of them may be here today. And I don't mean cops. I mean, you know, there may be NASA scientists here today that we are not so different from the people we're talking about. Human beings cannot keep a secret you may bank on it. And so the idea that, you know, somebody possesses a technology thousands of years in advance of us, I mean, then when you actually tear the lid off some of these government black operations, you don't find super scientists and brilliant minds. You find people like Gordon Liddy and John Dean and, you know, half-wits, clowns uh, seem to lie behind most of this. I, I believe that no, I am not a conspiracy person. I believe that nobody is in control and that the people who seek control are the most misguided of all and that there's a great deal more than we don't know than we do know. And, uh, you know, I would love to be convinced that something really far out were happening but it just always seems to come apart in your hands. These are, I, I consider stuff like the UFO phenomenon as popularly um, commercially available UFO beliefs as basically viruses of language, diseases of understanding. If you could teach people about the laws of evidence and how you build a case and stuff like that, then people wouldn't be troubled by this. The same fuzzy thinking that permits people to believe in UFOs permits them to believe in the imminent uh, 
uh, expectation of the second coming or you know the face of Christ appearing on tortillas and all of this stuff Ter- Terrence may, may I stop here for a second uh, is there a lot of people still with questions because we still have a lot of time well at least till 6 o'clock supposedly um, can I have a show of hands of Okay, there's a few more because we want to sort of limit the questions to one question per person and, and sort of one rebuttal from that so that everybody can get a fair share before we uh, make a final. Yeah. Is this a gentle hint to stop raving about UFOs? I just want to make sure he doesn't want to hear any more about Oh, I see. Well, I'll, I say to the UFO people the same thing, you know, what can you show us? Drag it forth. Everything has to be judged on the same field. It, it, if you got something, spill it. But to claim, you know, as I, I don't want to use names here, but stories like, well, we met the UFOs and they gave us a message from mankind, but when we got back to our car, our tape recorder had miraculously erased itself. <laughs> well, then be quiet. Don't tell anybody this. Don't you understand how lame that sounds to the doubter? It's, it's not the believer you have to convince. They're a pushover. What are you going to do about your skeptics? That's the problem. I was in the Amazon. Um, I was in a state of considerable psychic turmoil. And uh, I sat up all night. This is told, by the way, in the book, True Hallucinations, which will be published next year. And uh, at dawn, I looked across this lake, and there was a thin line of clouds on the horizon. And... uh, I watched this line of clouds and they were and then suddenly I noticed that they were turning in place like a pencil spinning on its axis in one place and then the clouds uh, this line of clouds broke apart into four perfectly identical lenticular clouds and then the lenticular the four lenticular clouds merged into two lenticular clouds and then the two merged into one and as they merged into one i i heard the the whee 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 sound of hollywood science fiction flying saucers and i realized this thing was coming toward me across the lake and it was absolutely convincing it was a flying saucer the real thing and and i i was absolutely convinced that it was going to take me at that moment and as it passed over only about 200 feet above my head I could see it clearly enough that I could see rivets on its underside I could see its running lights I could see it but you know what I saw? I saw the end cap of a 1932 model Hoover vacuum cleaner. It was the very same flying saucer that George Adamski suspended from a piece of Mylar fishing line in 1953 and photographed in his garage one of the most famous UFO hoaxes of all time. I saw it a diameter of 40 feet over the Amazon basin and I knew what I was looking at. It was uh, more disturbing than if it had been a ship from Zeta Reticuli because it had built-in cognitive dissonance. Uh, what? Well, see, I, I believe you completely. I don't have any problem with that. It's simply an enormous leap to say that that was a craft from another star. It's much better to just say it's a who knows what it is. The world is full of weird stuff. Just briefly, here's my best theory on flying saucers and a whole bunch of other stuff. This tries to solve all problems of this sort simultaneously. The transcendental object at the end of time, let's drag it in here. 
lines. And let's imagine that it is like those mirrored balls that they hang in discos above the bar and spin. So then I think that definitely there is a forward movement of causal necessity which propels us from the past into the present on into the future. But that there is also and necessary to account for precognitive visions and stuff like that, which happen all the time, a flow of information from the future into the past. And the transcendental object at the end of time is casting reflections of itself backward into the past. And if you are struck, whatever that means, by one of these scintillas from the transcendental object at the end of time, then you begin to cure and teach. And if you really got a good hit, possibly raise the dead. I mean, I'm not sure how far it can go. Now, also, these, these images of the transcendental object at the end of time haunt the skies of this planet in the form of spinning vortices of contradiction. This is what Jung said. He said, you know, the UFO is an image of the self. And I don't mean the little self. I mean the collective self of humanity. So a story like Jim's story, is, I have no problem with it. I take it as true. It's the people who say... You know, and they revealed the nature of the fall of Atlantis and the world plan. And then it's too much because it's coming through human interpretation. The horrible thing about the UFO people who claim contact is that the, the aliens they present to us are so incredibly mundane. So much more mundane than what you would encounter on a DMT flash <laughs> that they're just like the neighbors next door. Uh, I think that, you know, alien intelligence, the trick is not to find it, but to recognize it when it's in front of you. Intel intelligence is a very slippery concept. Sometimes we can't even identify it in the person sitting next to us on the bus. So how can you expect to identify the intelligence of an alien? It, it just seems incredibly unlikely to me. I think the world is a lot stranger than we suppose without evoking benevolent aliens who prefer vegetarian diets and who come from the stars. I mean, why do they so fit our preconception of what they would be? I mean, silvery humanoids. Uh, alien intelligence and alien life when and if you meet it you'll know you're in the presence of the real thing because you'll be barely able to wrap your mind around it well if we perceive these as being aliens that's one thing but what happens if in fact these humanoid creatures that we're defining are us traveling back through time and, and being able to materialize our, through, our t through the, the future technology then we're talking about something different. I'm not saying that this is true. This is only, you know, part of my own, you know, speculation. Well, it's an attractive that, idea. Yeah, it it right, raises exactly. problems, as I'm sure you're aware, sure. the grandfather paradox and so forth and so on. Uh, but it, it, it's a possibility. I think it's more likely that these are emissaries from the land of the dead yeah. than from the Pleiades. Right. And that... And since they speak English, since they look humanoid, since they seem to care about us and our technologies and so forth, they seem remarkably human. Well, maybe they're concerned about their own state of well-being. Maybe somehow it's related to, to the, the, you know, what's going on here now and what the outcome is going to be. Maybe that's going to somehow affect the way they are. You know, I mean, we've seen it in, in Star Trek. You know, I mean, the idea is... No, the idea is of, of, you know, people coming back from the future to, to, you know, I mean, there is a paradox obviously involved in this, so it is, it, it's a lot of our imagination at work, but at the same time, at the, at the same, in the same ideas, you know, maybe there's a certain sense of reality about it. 
Maybe there is. Maybe there is. It could no. be a holographic projection out of the Gaian mind. Mm. It could be, uh, you know, a race of intelligent saurians that rose and fell before the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaur. It could be all and everything. The trick is to try and get some kind of evidentiary hold on it.